Right, in this video we're going to have a look at file input and output. We're going to look at basic text files uh, and we're going to look at the use of pickle to uh, serialize data. There's nothing more to it uh, than that. Okay, so um, let's say you've got some data. Uh, maybe, for instance, you want to um, ask the user uh, what their name is. Uh, name equals input, no, input. Um, uh, what is your name? Nam. What is your Nam? What is your name? Okay, so they type in their name. What are we going to do with that? Well, we could print it out on the screen. Um, we could just print out name, uh, but what we want to do is we want to store this in a text file. Okay, so two ways of doing it. I'm going to show you the long way and then I'm going to show you the short way, which is actually the better way, but to understand why it's better you need to know the, the long way, kind of. Okay, so Python has a command called open and open will open a file. If I type in open uh, and then the name of the file that I want to open, I'm going to call it names.txt. Um, and in order to write to it, we need to open it in write mode. So we have to specify a W there. Okay. Now, when you open a file in write mode, it will totally overwrite everything that's in the file. If the file doesn't exist, it will create the file. Okay. But if the file does exist, it opens it and it completely overwrites it. Okay. Now, just opening the file isn't enough. We need to open the file and we need to uh, attach it to an object, a variable, if you like, a handle. Okay. Normally, we'd say file. File equals open uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay. What that does is it opens the file in write mode. Now, we need to do all the stuff that we want to do with that file and close it again. If you open the file, you've got to remember to close it, otherwise bad things happen. Okay, so uh, we're going to now write the name to the file, uh, and the way that we do it is we do file dot write. You can see there's a whole bunch of different um, uh, functions attached to uh, open files, so we're going to write the uh, variable to our text file, uh, and then we are going to close the file. File dot close. Okay, so what this does is it asks uh, what our name is, it prints the name out on the screen, and then it's going to open a file called names.txt. It's going to write our name to the file, and then it's going to close the file. Okay, so when I run this program, what is your name? It says, my name is Jim. It's not really, but, you know, it prints out Jim. And you might have noticed a new file has just popped up over here. If I open that file, you can see, clear as day, Jim has been added to it. If I run the program again and I type in a different name, maybe my name now is Muffle. Is that a real name? Do not know. Okay, I hit enter, it prints out Muffle. If I open names.txt, you'll notice it has totally overwritten that um, file. Okay, now it might be that you want to write multiple different items to a file. Okay, file.write works in a similar way to print. Okay, You want to write something to your file, just do another file.write. It's going to write some text. You can eat, you don't have to specify a variable, you can uh, write some text. This is some text. Okay, Now, when I run this program, let's have a look at what actually happens. Well, I mean, what you could do is pause the video, copy out that program and run it yourself and see what happens. Because there's something that's potentially unexpected happens in your text file. Okay, so run that, see it out, uh, see, see what happens and then come back and let's see um, what's going on here. So what is my name? It is uh, Gerb. Okay, uh, let's go to so what should be happening is it should be writing the name Gerb to the file and then writing this is some text. Now, you have probably noticed that instead of writing uh, gerb on one line and then this is some text on the next line, it has written it all uh, on the same line. Okay, file.write differs from print in that it doesn't automatically add new lines on the end of it. If you want to add a new line, you would have to do something like this, file.write and then specify the new line character. Backslash n means put a new line in there. Okay, so that's that's the line break character. 
it doesn't appear as backslash n it appears as a line break so if I run that program again now uh, what is your name uh, Herb it's Jerb's brother okay and uh, I open that we can see uh, it's written the um, the uh, the name it's put a new line on there and then it's written out that that text okay pretty straightforward right that's how you write to a text file okay now it might be that on subsequent you want to open a, a text file that exists and instead of obliterating everything that's in there you want to add to whatever is on the end okay and so this is how you do that. Instead of opening in write mode, you open it in append mode. Append means add on to the end of it. right? So what this is going to do is it is going to append to the end of the file. Um, because we are not putting a new line on there, I am going to put my backslash n in here. So our program now opens the text file and it will add whatever name we type in then it will put a new line in there and then it will write this is some text and then it will put a new line in there okay so let's try it let's run it uh, what is your name uh, let's say it's Jim okay and let's open our text file and you can see we got herb this is some text now I didn't put the new line in before I ran it uh, but it's now typed in Jim and this is some text and you can see there's a line number four which means we've got a new line if I run that program again we can carry on adding some stuff here what is your name snake there we go and uh, if I look at my thing now there it is snake again okay so writing to text files the only thing you really need to be aware of is whether you're opening it in write mode or in append mode uh, and to make sure that if you need to go onto a new line you have to physically write the new line character in there okay well that's all well and good but let's have a look at reading text files okay so I'm gonna get rid of the input here I'm still gonna open the file but I'm gonna do it in a slightly different way so instead of this instead of saying file equals open blah 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 and then doing our thing and then saying file dot close we're gonna use this syntax called with all right if I say with open um, what did I call it names dot txt uh, and I'm opening it in read mode, which is an R, uh, as file. Okay, if we do it like this, it will open the file and it will um, still give us a reference to it, namely file. Okay, um, but it will automatically close it as soon as we're done with this indented code block here. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I am going to read in the entire contents of the file. I'm going to call it, uh, let's call it contents. Okay, contents equals, can you guess what the command might be? That's right, file.read. Open brackets, close brackets, right? Uh, I put minus instead of equals there. Okay, so once we've read it in we want to close the file which means we just come out of that that block I can now print contents and let's see what we've got when we run that program you can see it has pulled in all of the information from the text file and it has um, stored it in this string called contents and then it has just printed out those contents it reads them in exactly as it appears in the text file including new lines, spaces, anything that's in that text file is going to be pulled out like that. Okay. Um, now, another thing that you might want to do, instead of reading all of the contents as one massive string, you might want to read each individual line as a separate item. You can do that. If you do uh, file.readlines, what it does is it reads each line uh, from the file uh, separately and it stores each of those separate lines in a different item in a list. Uh, best way of showing what I mean is by just running this program. You see I've changed file.read to file.readlines. When I run it now you can see we've now got a list. Each line is an item in that list. We've got herb this is some text, this is some text, snake, this is some text, and so on and so forth. One thing that you might notice is that um, each line includes the new line character, which you probably don't want. Okay, 
Um, so one way of um, fixing that, you could do something like this. After you've read in the entire contents of the uh, of the file, uh, you could do something like this: um, contents. Uh, right. Let's do it. Let's do it. I, I was going to do something more complicated than it needed to be. Uh, we could say for item uh, in. Um, We're going to enumerate for i item in uh, enumerate contents. You should remember what enumerate does from a previous video. Um, we can say um, contents i equals item dot replace backslash n empty string right let's just explain what's going on in this for loop okay we're enumerating the contents now if you don't remember how enumerate works we get two items we get i which is the index of the item that we're looking at and we also get a reference to uh, the item that we're looking at so the first time through the loop i is going to be zero and item is going to be herb backslash n okay so what this line of text does is it takes our item and the item is a string, it's going to replace all the instances of this character with this. Now this character is the new line character. We are going to replace all of the instances of the new line character with this, which is an empty string. Once it's done that, it then stores it in contents i. Well, contents i, the first time through is going to be contents 0, which is this. The second time through is going to be contents 1, which is this, and so on and so forth. If I run the program now, you can see it has gotten rid of those new line characters on the end. That might be useful if you are reading in all of the contents of a text file and storing it in a list. Okay, um, there's not an awful lot more to say about uh, reading or writing uh, text files. The only thing left, left to say is uh, how to do what's called object serialization. So when you write something to a file, you're actually just storing a string. You're not, if you're trying to store a, um, an integer or you're trying to store a list of items, you can't do that. It will not, the system will not remember what data type everything is. You have to convert everything to a string before you write. Now, sometimes that's fine, but sometimes you want to say, you know what, I want to store this information as if it's the actual data, the actual contents of this variable, and then later on I want to be able to load that in and carry on, you know, without having to do any fancy like you know, messing around. There is a um, library called uh, Pickle which allows you to do that. So if you import pickle, here it is, uh, import pickle, um, there we go. Um, we are going to create a variable. Uh, I'm going to say my num equals, uh, let's say, 128. That's a nice number. Uh, I'm going to say uh, my bool uh, equals true. And I'm going to say my, um, my list equals uh, my num uh, my bool. Okay, so we've got whole bunch of data there. If I was to write that data to a text file, I'd have to convert it to text and it wouldn't restore any of the, when I loaded it in, it wouldn't restore any of the connections that uh, they have here. Uh, it wouldn't uh, remember what data type anything is, etc, etc. But by using pickle, I can store those variables in the state that they are currently in. And then when I load them in, I can read them again in that state. Okay. Now, we open the file in exactly the same way as before, but this time we have to open it in binary write mode. Okay. So, I can say uh, with open, I'm going to call it um, uh, mydata.dat. You can call it whatever you want, but uh, the dot dat rather than dot text implies that we're storing binary data here rather than uh, text data. So, just bear that in mind. 
Now I'm writing in, uh, I'm opening it in write mode, but I'm opening it in binary write mode. So I have to say WB. Okay, as file. Once again, as file. Okay, so um, the way that we store this data is by using the dump command. We say pickle.dump pickle dot dump um, and we specify what it is we're storing so first of all I'm going to store my num uh, and then we specify where we're storing it so I'm going to store it in file okay uh, I'm also going to dump my bool and my list at the same time uh, pickle uh, dot dump Um, what am I calling it? My bool. My bool. Uh, and that's getting dumped into file. And then I'm going to do pickle uh, dot dump um, my list. Uh, and that is also going in the file. Okay. I'm going to run that. Control Shift F10 to run the program. No errors, that's good, and you'll notice a new file has been created. Now, if I open this, there might be some bits that look texty, um, but for the most part, it's going to be mostly garbled uh, to read. Uh, let's try and open it as a... See, you can see there, there's no readable stuff in there, right? We're, we're storing the binary data. The only reason uh, these uh, characters appear is because the binary data will be chunked up into 8-bit uh, bytes and that will try and pull out a character from the ASCII character set. You can see it's loaded the wrong character encoding. We're never going to see what's in there. Okay, To pull out the data, we need to use pickle again. Okay, So I'm going to open the file again in read mode. All right, we're going to say with open um, my data dot dat, um, and we're opening it in read mode, but again binary read mode uh, as file. Now this time we are going to load the items from our data file. The important thing to remember you load items in the order that they were dumped so you can't specify what item you load in right pickle just knows where the different things are it doesn't it, it can't scan through the uh, the data file to find them you load them in the order they they went in so the first thing that you can load is the first thing that you dumped which is my num the next thing that you load is the next thing which is my bool and then finally my list so let's just have a look and see uh, how this works I can say I'm not going to call it my num I'm going to give it a totally different variable name here um, I call it your num like that your num equals pickle dot load and you just specify the name of the file which in this case is file that automatically loads the first thing that we dumped in the file, right? I'm now going to say uh, your bool, like this, equals uh, pickle uh, dot load file. Again, don't have to specify anything other than the fact, yo, open this data file, load the, uh, the latest thing that was dumped. And then finally, um, your list uh, equals... Uh, pickle um, dot load um, file okay and just to prove that it has loaded that stuff from the text file uh, let's print um, your bool um, sorry let's do let's do it in the order let's your num uh, let's print uh, your bool and let's print uh, your list okay if I run this program now, what's going to happen is it's going to create these variables, it's going to dump them all in the file, then it's going to read them from the file, store them under different variable names. Okay, so remember, we're not setting any variable names other than what's, uh, what's being pulled out here. That's the only thing that's being stored in these variables, and then we are going to print them out. So if I run that now, you can see we've got 128 true, and then 128 true. Simples, right? Um, a lot of people get daunted by pickle, 
Um, it's generally a pretty good way of um, like storing basic data uh, or saving the state of your program. Uh, there are some potential security issues at GCSE level. You don't really need to worry about that. Um, I would recommend against um, if someone sends you a data file and say, "Oh yeah, use Pickle to pull out the uh, the information." I'd recommend against that um, unless you know exactly what's in the data file. Um, things to remember: uh, the items get dumped uh, in the order that you specify. They get loaded in the order they were dumped, and if you try and load something else let's say your error let's call it uh, you will get an error if I try and do another pickle dot load here uh, when I run my program you can see I get an error load missing required argument file uh, that's not the error I was expecting that's what I'm looking for your error because pickle load ran out of input it's it's what that is saying is you've already loaded all of the stuff from your pickle data file there isn't anything more what are you doing OK, so um, this can be very useful if you've got a list of, say, high scores or something like that. You want to store those high scores in an external file, uh, but in such a way that you can still load that data in easily uh, and carry on manipulating it um, when the when the program is run again, perhaps to sort your high scores into uh, into uh, an order and retain that order with a minimum of fuss. That's about it. Okay, so um, yeah, nothing, nothing else for me to say. Obviously, there's a lot more to uh, file writing than what I've just put here, uh, but for the basics, being able to uh, read text from a file, write text to a file, uh, dump data in a data file, and read data from a data file, what more, what more do you need? Well, there's right into images and stuff, but I'll cover that a bit later. Anyway, thank you very much, and I will see you next time.